The final chain that we're going to want to draw is the arm chain. And like the legs, we need to deal with as few bones as possible so that in the event that we need to use inverse kinematics, we have a predictable bend. So I'm going to use a two bone chain to represent the bicep forearm. And I add in one extra chain between the end of the wrist and the palm. And this will help me to set up some kind of uh, uh, ulna radius twist in the forearm and also distribute that roll all the way up to the bicep. When you pivot a bone around its length uh, in the forearm, you're trying to invoke the same behavior as your ulna radius when you twist your wrist. So the arms, as we recall, are drawn in the top view. And again, when things are drawn in the top view, they tend to sit on the ground, so we're going to need to raise it up. I can see the line of the shoulder here, so I'll start a 2D chain sort of in the character's arm a little bit. I'll find the crook of the elbow right about here. Again, not the middle, not the end, split the difference. And move out to the wrist about there. Now this leaves me a little tiny gap within which I can build the wrist twist bone. So I'm going to middle click, and I'm going to start the next chain right where the previous chain left off. And I'm going to draw one bone straight out like so. Now ideally what I want to do here is I want this bone's length to align with the length of the previous chain. And a little cheat you can do that, I uh, used to do that, is to actually just draw the chain. And you can see the uh, center pivot kind of dangling off of it there. And if I line that up, with the midline of the bone, so you can actually see it right there, so it kind of superimposes over top of it, that would be the same thing as aligning them. So if I right click and select those two hierarchies, I'm going to lift them up into the arm, because they are down on the ground, so I'll translate them up. If I move them locally, um, it should work or I could do it globally. Frame in there. And my only real um, qualification for placing this is to make sure that the roots and end effectors line up perfectly so that in the event I do have to use IK there's no slippage. But also at the start of the, sh uh, the, the bicep, the pivot that I usually like to place um, for the, the bending of the, the upper arm or the bicep would lie down just almost by the armpit. And this just allows this area not to cave into the body too much when I, uh, when I do envelope the character. So again, not too low, but not too high at the same time. And again, my pivot still sits right about here. It's not in the middle, but what's important is the pivot, not where it actually sits. Again, I'm only pivoting it around the, the z-axis. I'm not interested in the, the y-pivot here, which would be incorrect. So I also need to take the uh, small wrist twist chain. And again, I could obviously go in and just size down a couple of these attributes to make them easier to work with. I'm also going to change the visual icon of this uh, wrist twist bone to a cylinder because the only job of this object is going to be to rotate it. And I'll just right click on that chain. I'm going to match its position up with the effector of the arm. And I'll take the end of the palm, or the beginning of the palm, and I'll match it up position-wise with the position of the end effector of the wrist twist. So everything is aligned perfectly now. and that'll help us later on down the line when we um, when we rig our character. So all the bones are built. There are a few extra bones we could put in if our character had uh, different parts that Melkor doesn't have, but for a simple skeleton this is all we need. Now we need to focus on renaming the bones and parenting them in properly before we mirror them across to the other side.